Hindustan Aeronautics and General Electric are set to sign an agreement for the development of infrastructure to support the production and testing of the new F-414 INS-6 engine in India, but India is not the first country to locally assemble the F-414 engine, as South Korean company Hanwha Tequin has also signed an agreement with General Electric to manufacture 100 F-414 engines for its KFX aircraft by 2026 but only 30 to 40 percent of the components will be manufactured locally in Korea, while in case of India, the transfer of technology and the percentage of locally manufactured components will reach 75 percent, as India is procuring a larger number of engines for Tejas Mark II Ted BF and AMCA Mark I, which has represented a substantial business opportunity for General Electric, with an estimated $4.5 billion from direct engine sales and an additional $6 billion from maintenance and export contracts for the three aircraft powered by the F-414 engine. The Indian Air Force chief has announced that each of its Su-30 squadrons now possesses Su-30 aircraft armed with the BrahMos air-launched supersonic cruise missile. The Air Force has 18 Su-30 squadrons in its fleet, and now the Air Force has deployed at least one BrahMos-capable aircraft per squadron. However, this number is expected to increase to four BrahMos-capable Su-30 jets per squadron, which will be around 72 aircraft in the coming years. The Air Chief also said that the future induction of the BrahMos NG missiles holds promise for the Air Force, as its compatibility with multiple fighter jet platforms will further enhance overall combat effectiveness. While the initial HLF T-42 Hindustan lead-in fighter trainer will be powered by F-414 engine, Hindustan Aeronautics is contemplating the use of more powerful engines for the production variant of the aircraft to enhance the performance capabilities of the next-generation fighter trainer, and to ensure that it meets the evolving requirements of modern training and combat scenarios for the Indian Air Force. Indian Navy's MH-60 Romeo multi-role helicopter achieved a significant feat yesterday, by successfully undertaking its maiden landing on the INS Vikrant. The successful landing demonstrates the compatibility and adaptability of the MH-60 with the carrier's advanced infrastructure, and seamless integration and interoperability between the helicopter and the carrier. The Navy will receive 24 MH-60 helicopters by 2025, and is also planning to place a follow-on order for at least six more units. After undergoing thorough safety checks, the Indian military has granted clearance to the Dhruv Advanced Light Helicopter for emergency flying missions. However, routine sorties are still awaiting approval pending further evaluations and assessments. This decision signifies that the helicopters are deemed safe and reliable for urgent operations that require immediate deployment. The Indian Navy will participate in the Malabar 2023 exercise with its top-of-the-line destroyers, P-8 IMT submarine aircraft and a submarine, that is scheduled to take place off the east coast of Australia from 11th to 22nd August. With the Chinese Navy becoming belligerent in the Indo-Pacific, the main focus of the naval drill would be anti-submarine warfare operations.